Joining me on the phone right now is our good friend Peter Wolfgang, the Executive Director of Family Institute of Connecticut. Welcome back, Peter. Al, good morning. Good to be back on with you. Hey, so uh, this is a uh, kind of a big day at the state capitol today. Uh, the new legislative session begins. General Assembly gathers once again for the next uh, three months or so. And I imagine that uh, you have uh, a couple things that you hope to see happen this uh, this spring. Yes, we do, Al. You know, this is um, this is the time of the year when all of Connecticut basically holds its breath for like three months to yeah. see what the legislature may do to the state. What wacky stuff's going to come out next, huh? <laughs> yeah, the good news is this. And you know, Al, almost every time I'm on with you, no matter what time of the year it is, I'm always saying this is a very busy time for the Family <laughs> Institute. It always let, is a busy time. <laughs> let me say, on the onset, and you and I can come back at the end of the session good. and uh, and talk about this again and, and see whether or not what I said on February 8th turned out to be true. Okay. But this should should be a boring session. Now, the reason I say that is because there's, there's a two-year pattern at the state capitol where every, every even-numbered year, every election year, is what's called the short session, mm-hmm. where it's only supposed to be fiscal issues. So some of the things we've dealt with uh, just last year, the, the transgender bill that um, allows men to enter into women's bathrooms, those sorts of things should not come up this year. However, um, there has been a pattern in the past, even though this is supposed to be just about fiscal issues, that the folks on the other side, the anti-family forces, they never sleep. There's always something. Mm. So <clears throat> what Family Institute is going to be doing, we're going to try to take advantage of this year to press press advantages that we already have. So, for instance, last year, Family Institute brought about the first ever public hearing in the state of Connecticut on a parental notification law. This is um, a law that requires minor girls to at least notify their parents before obtaining an abortion. Connecticut is one of only a few states that do not have this law, and this law has been shown to cause a decrease in the abortion rates in other states. And this isn't just, you know, something for the South or the Midwest. Massachusetts, Rhode Island, the states that surround us, have uh, a parental consent law where parents you actually need parents' permission so that we don't even have a notification law in Connecticut. Hmm. It's a serious thing. We held this public hearing last year, and so um, we want to try to get uh, get a vote on an actual bill and move the ball down the court on in terms of passing parental notification. So that's good. something we're going to be working on this year. Very good. Another thing that really concerns us your listeners may remember last October there was an incident at Hartford Public High School, uh, forced pro-gay indoctrination, where school officials uh, worked with a gay advocacy group to put on this play in Hartford Public High School that uh, exposed children to that lifestyle, taught them that it's, it's uh, neutral or even morally good, and there was actually a moment in the play that had two men kissing. And the, the school officials admitted to the newspapers that they deliberately chose not to let parents know ahead of time about this so that they could opt out their children. We want what's called an opt-in right, which is that parents get a proactive right to be notified ahead of time when this sort of thing is being taught in the schools so that they can exercise their right to take their children out when, they're, when their own beliefs are being assaulted in this way, when the, when the kids are being indoctrinated into accepting alternative lifestyles. That is a bill that we're going to be uh, introducing at the state capitol this session. Those are probably our two biggest priorities. But, of course, you know, it's the folks on the other side that essentially control every lever of power up at the state capitol. Until that changes through elections, that's what we have to deal with. So we're going to be on the lookout for, we know the folks on the other side, the pro-abortion lobbies, for instance, they want to pass uh, buffer zones that prevent pro-life counselors from approaching women that are entering um, abortion clinics and trying to dissuade them from having their abortions. I mean, just down in Bridgeport, there's a there's a beautiful um, Christian evangelical group down in Bridgeport uh, in front of the abortion clinic that has saved 2,000 babies wow. since 1990. And, I mean, that's the sort of thing that this law would put a stop to. So we we want to we want to fight any efforts to pass that law. Um, there was something in New York City about a year ago where they put these onerous new restrictions on crisis pregnancy centers. They want to try to introduce something like that in Connecticut. We're on the lookout for that. And, you know, the, the, the session, it changes. I mean, there are things that we're not even aware of right now, mm. as I talk to you, that will probably pop up. Right, big surprises. 
Yeah, so it's, it's almost a sort of like the game whack a mole. You know, you're always <laughs> you're always kind of keeping an eye wow. on, on what you know. We don't know what's going to come up in the course of this session, but those are our biggest priorities. Good. And, you know, typically the other side is not as crazy in an election year as they are in an off year. I mean, they, their attitude is, you know, if you want to do something crazy, do it in, in the beginning of a non-election year so that a year and a half goes by and at election time the voters forget about it. So right. they usually lie quiet um, in an election year, but right. you never know. And this is, this is the role of Family Institute of Connecticut Action. This is specifically our C4, our lobbying organization. Right. We're, we're your watchdog. We're your watchmen on the Hill. We're the ones that are up there um, at the state capitol keeping an eye on this stuff for the body of Christ throughout the state of Connecticut. But we don't want to do it just on our own. We want to raise up an army. If, there's, if something big does happen, we hope people uh, will go to ctfamily.org, sign up for our emails if they're not already on it, because if, if we need to throw together a quick lobbying day or good, something to good. fight a bill, we need an army of people up there at the state capitol speaking to their state representatives. Good. I think that's a great idea that you can keep folks uh, kind of ready to be mobilized, like you said, just like an army ready to fly into action. Uh, it's not just you, uh, although you, you're, you're, a, you're a terrific general and you, you blow a good whistle. Uh, but you need some uh, some soldiers behind you, and so we want to support that effort. Uh, in a, in about uh, sixty seconds, can you talk about uh, the uh, sad reversal of uh, the Susan G. Komen Foundation and what happened there this week? Sure, you know that's that's just a terrible thing. I mean, Komen is this great breast cancer charity right. that unfortunately gives money to Planned Parenthood, which does abortions. Pro lifers have stayed away from it. Komen seemed to finally get the message. They uh, said that they would not fund Planned Parenthood anymore. And Planned Parenthood, it was basically like a mobster shakedown. Mm -hmm. They brought such pressure to bear on Komen that Komen reversed its decision. So I I have to tell pro-lifers to continue not to give to Komen. If you gave during that brief period last week where they seemed like they were moving away from Planned Parenthood, ask for your money back. We hope this situation will be resolved. We hope Komen, you know, they're sending kind of ambiguous signals. Nobody really knows where Komen is on this Mm. right now. But until the matter is cleared up, pro-lifers, there are other good uh, breast cancer charities that you can give to. But stay away from Komen. They are pro-abortion. Sounds interesting. Okay, Peter, thank you so much. Keep us updated if uh, anything interesting crops up in the next three months. And we'll definitely look forward to getting some updates from you. Thanks so much, Al. God bless.